This is a brief lecture to accompany chapter seven in the O'Leary and Hunt textbook. This is a chapter on analyzing your data. To summarize, the key concept of this chapter as noted on this slide is data are messy, results are clean. So keeping that concept in mind, how do we get from data to results? And that's really what this chapter is all about. When we hear something like data analysis, it might sound like a really strictly defined concept. We might even think there's only one right way to get the job done. But I think this text book does a really good job of making clear that there can be many different entry points to data analysis. Much depends on the type of data you've collected and on your goals as a researcher. I like these keywords that this book uses in discussing what it means to analyze data. They describe this as a process of making sense, of interpretation, of ascribing meaning, and they also say data analysis is part art and part science. Getting a little more specific, your textbook breaks down data analysis into five main tasks. First, keeping your eye on the main game, meaning that you don't forget your end goal for the research. Managing your data so it's ready for your intended modes of analysis, whatever that may be. Engaging in the actual process of analysis. Presenting your data in ways that capture understandings and then drawing meaningful and logical conclusions. Now, of course, how these tasks are carried out depends on the type of data we're talking about. As always, an important distinction that we start with is whether you've collected qualitative or quantitative data. This slide summarizes the key features of qualitative and quantitative data analysis. Note that when you're dealing with qualitative data, the process is recursive and nonlinear. This can be unsettling at times based on my own experience, but the important thing is that at some point you gain enough clarity on the data that you can present some meaningful conclusions. And even though it's messy, you still have to find a way to be systematic. You have to be able to tell a story that shows some order amidst the chaos even if it didn't feel that way along the way. There's a diagram on page 190 of your textbook that I think is a really nice depiction of these aspects of qualitative data analysis. Quantitative analysis, moving over to the, the right-hand column here, is much more structured. It is much more important to have a clear plan from the beginning and to work out any flaws in that plan before you start collecting your data because obviously you're going to be collecting a lot larger amount of data and it's much harder to turn around if you make some missteps. Your textbook provides an excellent overview of the key concepts you need to understand in quantitative data analysis. As I've said in regard to other chapters, you can read selectively in this chapter and pay attention to the sections of the chapter that are most pertinent to your own research. The final section of this chapter moves beyond data analysis and starts considering data presentation. We'll be spending much more time on data presentation when we move into the data visualization textbook that you'll start reading in week nine. So I'm not going to say much about this topic for now. However, I do want to share with you an example from one of my own recent projects. This is a qualitative study based on interviews with STEM professionals to gain a deeper understanding of the communication skills that these professionals see as most important to effective leadership. So these are some screenshots from Invivo, which is one of the qualitative analysis software tools that your textbook discusses in this chapter. In the article I've submitted to report the results of this study, which is right now under review at the Journal of Business and Technical Communication, um, in that article I've included these screenshots as figures one, two, and three. I think this is a nice example in the context of this chapter because it illustrates, like the chapter says, how closely connected are management and analysis when we are talking about qualitative data. 
Basically, the different branches of the trees that you're seeing in these visuals represent categories of themes that were used both to manage and to analyze the interview transcripts that served as primary data forms in this study. I have a fair amount of experience using InVivo and would be glad to discuss if any of you are considering using a software like this to manage and analyze your qualitative data. On the other hand, as I've already told some of you individually, if you're taking a more quantitative approach, I can be helpful as a general guide, but you will want to consult with someone who has more experience in that type of, of research to gain some additional mentoring in that regard. So, and finally, in any workplace research project, you eventually have to get to the end of the story. Your textbook introduces three concepts that are applicable to this part of the research. Summaries, conclusions, and recommendations. I really like how they explain each of these concepts, as I have found in the past in, that the conclusion is the most difficult part of any document I ever write. And surprisingly, there's very little guidance available on how to write it effectively. People just seem to take for granted that you know how to write a conclusion. So we'll talk more about this when the time comes, but basically, as introduced by your textbook, a summary is just a short version of some kind of longer content. Conclusions and recommendations, by contrast, take the next step and draw the reader's attention to some key points of your findings and relate those points back to the initial research question that motivated the study. Recommendations go even one step further and suggest some concrete actions that you want to encourage your reader to take in response to these conclusions. So that brings us to the end of this week's lecture. By now, you should all be well into the process of collecting both existing and primary data. And so you shouldn't be surprised to find out that this week's discussion forum is going to ask you to write a little bit about what you've found so far in beginning to analyze that data. Thanks very much, and I hope you have a great week.